Hi, and welcome to Shopping East Tennessee. I'm Kim Palo, and today we are at one of my favorite places in town, that is Relics Antiques, and I'm here with Laura Martz. She is the owner of this fine establishment, and thank you so much for having us out here today. Thank you for coming to see us. Well, we always love to keep, see Laura. There are so many things in this establishment that you can stay here for, for a week. In fact, I think I might send Joe out and let him stay with you a while. But tell us a little bit about what's going on, about some of the new stuff that you have in the shop. I get new things in every day. Um, I'm got great dealers and I work hard to fill the store with unusual items and every day it, it, there's something new coming in. New furniture, especially a lot of small items. Yeah, always when you come in and I can tell from the last time that I was here just how much that she has added to the inventory here and it's such a, a mixture. You're not going to find any one thing. Now let's be sure that we're clear about what's an antique and what's not because guys, I'm vintage. So tell yeah, us what's the vintage. difference. That's right. Uh, a true antique is 100 years or older. Uh, most antique shops call vintage uh, 50 years and older. Uh, and there's a little confusion because people think uh, 25 years is old as an antique, but that really is only for classic cars. Um, pretty, I, I try to keep the store 1960s and older. Um, occasionally I'll have a newer item in if it's got really good bones and it's really well made, but, but my passion and my love is for uh, vintage and antiques. Right, and if you are a child of the 60s, you will see lots here that will remind you of home. Um, you can walk through it and there are some very nostalgic pieces that we all grew up with that we remember seeing in our homes, as well as toys. You have just a different array. I mean, just to, you've got the furniture, you have the glass, you have a little bit of everything. Tell us a little bit, textiles, a little bit of everything. I do. Well, my favorite thing in the store is trying to categorize or have booth settings with uh, time periods. So there will be uh, Victorian time periods, mid-century modern, Western, military, um, primitive, um, country and shabby styles. But, it, but to me, it's fun to kind of group it in areas so you can see how to use the items in your home um, and how to decorate with them. I do also carry other collectibles, uh, children's toys, um, I just put out some items today that are from the 40s and 50s. Right. Um, 1950s Mickey Mouse tea set in the original box. Um, but even some toys that date back to the 30s. I have a Tom Mix circus wagon that's really neat. And that... Uh, She's going to have a hard time pretty, party yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and I don't even know. I never watched Tom Mix. Right. But, but there are definitely collectors for Hopalong Casty and Tom Mix and some of the things that are from the early earlier part of the century. Right, she does have many things, and you know the holidays are coming up, guys, and this would be a, a great place to come get something that not everybody else is going to be out there shopping for, or that you know it's going to come in the the same cellophane wrapper. That this is something that would be an individualized, special um, gift for that person in your life, whether it be a friend, a relative, or or your significant other. Joe just showed me a book over there a few minutes ago. He wanted me to read. It said uh, the the perfect wife, or maybe it was the good wife, and I told him I. Said, Joe, I wrote that. So anyway, <laughs> there are so many things here. You've got some of the old, you've got some nice collections of books that I saw mm -hmm. here in the front. I mean, she's got beautiful furs, older furs that you have here. I mean, just talk, and the, and the Western hats you were telling us about, there's a whole nice selection of, of nice hats over there. And those aren't antique, but they're really good quality. <laughs> Stetson and Resist All and uh, different, different hats done. But uh, I, yes, I do have a, a, a couple of furs, although those are not, uh, I don't think our winters get cold That's enough. That's right, to wear they're just, furs. they're conversation pieces. Though. They are. Um, books, I've uh, recently put some books into the store that date from 1762, 1768. Uh, they're leather bound and they're really beautiful. Uh, those are probably about the oldest items I have in the store. I do have some china that dates from the late 1700s. But most of the books in the store will be from the mid to late 1800s. Um, I have a couple of first editions in here, and I love uh, Victorian children's books. You'll see a selection of those in here as well. There's a lot of classics. Uh, today I put out some Dickens. Uh, there will be uh, Hawthorne, um, Bryant's poems, and all late 1800s books. The joy of that is the way they're bound so beautifully yeah. and they decorate beautifully in your home. And they're, they're absolutely uh, readable 
uh, and not, <laughs> shockingly, not any more than what it would cost to buy it at Books A Million. And that's it's, the truth. It, it is, and, and they're just beautiful books. Uh, but I also carry a lot of other variety. I, I really look for anything that's unusual and unique and not what other typical antique stores carry. If it's something I've never seen before, it makes me want to have it <laughs> and uh, learn about it. Um, mm -hmm. Today I put <laughs> an early 1900s monkey organ grinder, grinder monkey outfit, outfit in the store. Um, I don't know how quick that'll sell, but it sure is a conversation piece. It is a piece. conversation piece, and you have many things like that throughout the store. And like she said before, things are grouped together. You have an art deco area. You have mm -hmm. areas that have more of like the kitchen wear. That's the stuff that I get nostalgic about. You'll see the mm -hmm. older corning wear. You'll see some of the, the beaters, the different things mm -hmm. before everything got, you know, where it was pushed with a button, that there you've got some beautiful just pieces, and then just some of that nostalgic stuff that we all grew up with and a rolling pin if you need a rolling pin this is the place to get one and really a really cool ones. one that's <laughs> right really heavy and good ones I do in the uh, the kitchen area uh, Fiesta is still very popular I'll prefer the older pieces but Pyrex and old Corning um, they're better made the old stuff just holds up a lot better um, mid-century canister sets, mm -hmm. um, just just unusual things that you can decorate with instead of stuff made in China last week. Um, but I'd, and I like Art Deco, and of course there's primitives too. Primitives, uh, yellowware and spongeware, um, salt glazed pottery from the late 1800s through the early 1900s. Um, just uh, there's a, I try to keep a lot of variety to to satisfy a lot of taste decorating style in the home. Right, and sometimes it's difficult to buy for men. I know it always was for me with my dad yeah. and even with Joe and my boys. I have two boys. It's it's difficult sometimes to, to shop for men. I mean, they are, you know, not another yeah. tie, please, no. But you do have a lot of stuff in here that would either go in a man's office or, you know, just as a part of his house and his den yeah. or whatever. There are some very, very... Um, I don't, masculine items that you would think that would be a good good gift for a man here at these holidays times. I do. Your I try boss. To, try to buy more, <laughs> really. My right. husband, he's really hard to buy for for Christmas, but uh, I, he takes every good pocket knife I get. <laughs> um, but pipes, um, but uh, any profession for, for male or uh, men or women, uh, pharmaceutical, collectibles, law books. I have law books uh, that are late 1800s, uh, leather bound that are would be beautiful in any office. Um, military items, tramp art, mm -hmm. trench art. Um, those are always a really good collectible for uh, some guys. And military items. Um, it's I'm learning to have a better eye for buying for men. Trying. Right. Trying. <laughs> trying. 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 It's a difficult task yeah. process, but Laura does a very good job at that. You also have, and I've and I've been uh, sneaking around and looking, you've got some beautiful jewelry pieces. I mean, it, they're, they're, it's, you know, costume jewelry. I don't know if that's what they called it. It is. Then, but, I mean, it is just beautiful and very different and would be just something that you would be pleased with. A lot of the parties that you're going to be going to, everybody's going to find that, you know, you kind of see the same stuff from everybody, but no, not here. You can get a really nice piece of jewelry to make that outfit special and generally less expensive than buying new I don't I prefer again uh, Victorian through the 1960s uh, vintage jewelry because it's different you're not gonna see pieces on everybody's right. neck um, the I will occasionally buy a little bit newer uh, jewelry if it's really classy looking right. but pretty much what I carry is vintage brooches and bracelets Coro Miriam Haskell uh, the designer pieces out of the mid-century that are so popular. Well, and this is the time of year for that type of yeah. thing. I mean, it's great year-round, but, you know, you have a lot of festivities going on at this type of, uh, this time of year, and so that you can have something different when you walk in. Now, you might have to screw the earrings on. I was Ooh. looking at that. Those are, those are kind of cute, might though, but they, they might hurt a little bit, but just for a few hours, well, it'll be just fine. But, you know, about repurposing, um, you can take the clips that may hurt a little bit, drop it on a chain, mm -hmm. and use it as a necklace. Also, people use clips on um, the straps of purses, collars. You can repurpose a lot of the items like that. Right, and you can do that a lot here. We were talking about that uh, before because, you know, I'm walking around with Laura and I'm not sure what a lot of things are. I didn't know what a flower frog was. Sorry, guys. I mean, I don't know. I must have slept through that. Um, but I didn't know. But she was telling me about so many items that 
I thought one thing was a soap dish and it wasn't, but you can repurpose so many things here in the store to make your home have something a little bit different than everybody else. Talk a little bit about the, the things that maybe you have in your home or that you have here in the store that people could have and re repurpose in their home. I do. I like taking uh, the mid-century, what we call catch pots. They were little tiny flower pots that the plant probably died in right away because there wasn't any drainage holes, but they're so cute. You can use those in a bathroom. You use uh, cotton swabs or Q-tips. Wow. Or, or, um, and then uh, instead of using a nut dish, you use that as a, a soap dish in the bathroom. Right. Or try to, th and I love doing that in the stores, trying to uh, repurpose items. A, a really old stop sign makes a really great piece of wall art mm -hmm. in, a, in a son's room or even license plates. Just using stuff in a different way and at thinking outside of the box on how to use it in your home. Right, and there's so many, sh and, and Laura has a lot of great ideas, and she's here almost every day, maybe not on Wednesdays yeah. all the time, but most of the time you're going to find Laura here unless she's on a shopping store spree, and she can help you. But also, she can tell you if you have something. Now, she's not an appraiser. She doesn't pretend to be. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't claim to be. But she can find out a good price for something if you have something that yeah. you think might be special. You can bring that in to Laura. Tell us a little bit about what you do with that, that type of thing. Absolutely. If it's small items, many people will bring things in that they're wanting to sell. i um, be more than glad to give you a price on that. I don't, I don't appraise because I'm not a certified appraiser, but I'm always interested in buying 1960s and older items uh, that you're, you're wanting to find a new home for. Um, so just give us a call. If it's bigger uh, items, furniture, or a house full of items, we can always make arrangements where I can come out and see you. Yeah, and she will give you a good deal because, you know, a lot of times with these people that kind of blow through that you see at shows or something like that, mm -hmm. they can, right, they can give you a price and then they're gone and they're gone with your merchandise and you don't know what they actually sold that for. But Laura is here and she's here to stay. And so if you see your item in here with her price tag on it, you'll know that she gave you a fair price. So that's, it's a great way to keep things and to keep things local. Now, Laura, tell us a little bit about where you're located. I'm at 2270 Candies Lane Northwest. If you're familiar with Cleveland, it's um, just past the skating rink on the right or where you, Rolling Hills Golf Course used to be. I'm open Monday th uh, through Saturday, 10 to 6, most Sundays from 1 to 4. Well, see, I mean, seven days a week, guys. And I'm telling you, this is probably, instead of taking the nap on Sunday afternoon after church, because that's my favorite pastime, this is a great place to spend it on the weekend to come in to go browsing. Um, it just has a lot of different items that you're not going to see anywhere else. The quality of the furniture. I mean, just the piece we're sitting on, Laura, this is a beautiful piece. It is. And this is not, I mean, and you can tell the quality of the workmanship on this. This is not something that you're going to see just everywhere as well of all the pieces of furniture. Um, you can come in, you can shop, you can talk to Laura and she can give you some great ideas but you'll always know that she'll give you a fair deal and when you're buying something or if you want to sell something. Thank you so much for having us out here. It is always a joy. I appreciate it, Kim. Is Thank there you. anything else you want to tell these folks about what's going on and mm. if something special? I just appreciate all my customers. I've been here six and a half years and it's been a joy to be a part of Cleveland. Oh, thanks so much, Laura. I'm Kim Palo for Shopping East Tennessee. Thank you.